everyone. Welcome to Mary's The Art of Cooking. So I'm going to be cooking some cabbage. And I have already my bacon and my sausages already in the pot and my bell pepper. So it's going to be some fried cabbage. So I'm going to go ahead on and start cutting up my cabbage. You can cut your cabbage however way you want to cut them. I'm cutting them this way because I don't want them to take a long, long time to cook. And just stir around that one. Run the fire down a little bit. Stirring it around so that oil coats the cabbage. I'm going to take another one and you're just going to repeat this process. I'm going to stir that around. Keep on stirring. As you notice, I didn't drain my um, onion. I mean, I'm sorry. I didn't drain my um, bacon fat or my sausages. How's everyone doing? Happy Father's Day to the fathers. To all the fathers. Happy Father's Day. Let me uh, stir this. And this is how I fry my cabbage. Keep turning it though.
when you do your cabbages, you want to make sure you take off the big parts because they take longer to cook. Put a little butter in here. Just a little butter. Just a half a stick. And these will wither down the more the heat gets to it. So just keep stirring because you don't want them to burn or stick. So I'm just letting it sweat as I turn it, bringing the ones that are sweating a little bit up to the top so it can rotate it so that all can cook evenly.
So, I use my favorite, <laughs> chicken bouillon. Oh, wait a minute. I have one already over here. And you just put... You know, this have enough salt in it for you. You don't really need to add salt. But just season to taste. With your black pepper. And let's stir this little bugger. You hear that frying? It's still sizzling. Just a little bit more oil. Hey, look at that. I know my videos are long, but I like for you to experience what's really going on in the kitchen. And like I said, as I um, get, you know, more knowledgeable to what it is that I need to do, they'll become shorter. But as for right now, I'd like to thank you guys for having patience with me. See over in this pot how it's coming along. Looks good. Some people would stop right, just stop right here. Just this limp part. They'll stop right here, and it's done to them. But it's not fully cooked yet. So how is everyone doing again? I'm going to taste this and see how it's, uh, how is the seasoning? That's good. So we're going to keep cooking this. Meatloaf. In one of my upcoming videos, I'm going to show you how I make my turkey meatloaf as well as a beef meatloaf. Okay? So, we're going to put this on there. 
And we're gonna move this in like that. And you just keep stirring until you get your cabbages as tender as you would want them to be. You notice I didn't put a lid on this, right? And the reason why I didn't put a lid on it because I don't want my cabbages to just dwindle down to so mushy. I want them to fry. Look at that. So I'm kind of good, I'm telling you. And the season is off the chain. Okay, off the hook. <laughs> So, don't forget to like this video, share this video, and subscribe. And hit the notification button. Every time Mary's in the kitchen, you'll get Mary the Art of Cooking. Okay? So, we're going to try to bring to you some, you know, different recipes. Some that you know, some that you don't know. Some things that you don't do that I may do. And don't forget to leave um, a comment. I do read your comments. Thank, I want to thank everyone that has been commenting on my page. Thank you so much. And thank you for my faithful ones that keep coming back. Good job. They keep coming back. This tube is just like church. You can go to any other YouTuber. But I thank and praise God that you have tuned in to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for watching. All right, so what can we talk about today? Hmm. Difficulty, difficult time. Difficult situations, work. What do you want to talk about? Work. Hmm. Let's talk about work. Okay. Let's talk about work. Do you find work sometimes very challenging? Do it feel like you sometimes don't understand your work? Feels like sometimes you don't understand the people that you work with? Well, let me give you a little, um, put you at ease and a little clarity. If your job was all good, you would never know how to face challenges and how to get through things. When you, it's, it's almost like a child. Work is almost like a child. When you have a child that has had it very easy in life, no, I mean, no difficulties, no nothing buffering you, you know, nothing agitating, aggravating you, just all good. Nine out of 10, head of the bush. Yes, nine out of 10. That person will not know how to stand in the midst of a controversy. And that's the same with an adult. If you have had it easy all your life, and finally when a storm comes, <laughs> you don't know how to stand. That's when that murmuring and complaining comes. 
that's when you talk everybody hates me everybody against me nobody likes me that's when that start coming and then the spirit of running start coming you want to run you want to quit you want to move on to another place but if you would just stand stand If you would just stand in the midst of controversy, I can guarantee you, you'll come out victorious. It's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. It's a hot day today, y'all. So you're going to have to excuse me. It's a hot day. It's going to be hard. But if you stand in the midst, of the enemy's territory and let them see that you're not running they'll start running you now became crazy in their eyes in their thinking <laughs> it's not that you crazy it's just that sometimes god would allow circumstances situations to come upon us to mold us to condition us to get us ready to get us ready for what's really coming and trust me that little buffering that we're getting that's nothing and if you would just show the enemy that you're not scared and that you're willing to stand let me tell you a little something about that them devils will start fighting amongst themselves. Yeah. They'll start turning on each other. They're only together because they're against you. They're in agreement against you. That's why they're together. But once you find peace in the midst of your storm, <laughs> they, that, that enemy will flee. He has to turn. See, because his little game... His little game that he was doing. I'm going to move away from the heat, the stove a little bit. That little game that they were playing, it backfired. And what I remember what the scripture says, David says, what you meant for evil, God made it good. So when God makes something good, it has to turn. It has to reverse back up on the enemy. And I guarantee you they can't take it like you have taken it you will see them crumble and you will see them fall you will see the wicked you will see them fall apart just stand in the midst of your storm and remember god is with you he said is if i am for you i am more than the world against you you don't need no army let me tell you something and i'm gonna tell you this is true I've had people to come up on me. I mean, high, in hot places to come against me. I mean, it seemed like I was all by myself in the midst of this. It felt like it was only me in the midst of this storm. And I began to just go down on my knees and say, even me, Lord. Even me, Lord. Lord, remember me in the midst of my storm. Even me, Lord. And that's what you're telling them. Lord, even me in the midst of my storm. I know that you're doing it for somebody else, but Lord. But even me in the midst of my storm. Remember me in the midst of my storm, Lord. And he will. He will remember you in the midst of your storm. He will. And again, I say, when they seem like the whole world, I mean, CEOs, administrators, uh, managers, and and I just go in my, 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 we have a chapel at, at the hospital. 
I will come off the floor, go in the chapel, and I will begin to pray and intercede and give God thanks and give him the glory and give him the honor and just give him praise. And I'm going to tell you something. Yeah. It had to turn. It had to turn because God is faithful. And he said, be not deceived for God is not marked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he or she will reap. They're going to reap that. So don't ever think that, you know, it's only happening to you. It's not just happening to you. You just happen to have your day of testing. It is a test. To be your testimony of how good God is. How David said that he saw the enemy fall. You know what I'm saying? Don't worry about it. Pray Psalms 91. Pray Psalms 35. Pray Psalms 41. Yeah, I tell you one thing. Read that. Psalms 39. I mean 41. Psalms 35 and Psalms 91. Read it. Read it. Read it. And get that in your spirit. David even talked about, you know, if it wasn't, if it wasn't it, it, when the enemy was coming up on me, he says, if the enemy wasn't of my own household, in other words, if it wasn't somebody I loved, in other words, somebody you got close to at work turned on you, I could have taken it. Actually, they was against you in the first place. You just didn't know it. They hid it. They hit it well. And I'm not saying that you got to be suspicious. I'm saying you got to discern the spirit and see what you're coming with, coming in contact with. The Bible said, how can two walk together except they be in agreement? You're not in agreement if you're walking with a person that's in adultery. You're not in agreement if you're walking with a person in fornication. You're not in agreement if you're walking with a back by a liar and a gossiper. You're not in agreement. And that's why things are coming up against you because you're not in agreement in the book of Galatians 5 and 19 talks about the working of the flesh, which are manifested. And they talk about adultery, fornication, witchcraft, idolatry, emulous, verilis, it, verilis, it talks about all that stuff. Galatians 5 and 19. But then Jesus turned the uh, Galatians, Paul turned around in Galatians 5 and 20. He goes on down in the 21st verse, so on. That but the fruit of the spirit. This is what we possess. We have the fruit of the spirit. So why are we doing the worldly stuff, the 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 fleshly stuff? So just know that um um you know be encouraged. Just be encouraged. Be encouraged and say to you and start saying to yourself, this too is going to pass. It's going to pass. You know why it's going to pass? Because I'm not going to dwell in it. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadows of the almighty. Psalms 91. I told you, told you. Read Psalms 91. Read Psalms 35. Read Psalms um, 41. You, you're going to get some good little nuggets. You're going to get some good little nuggets. I'm telling you. You'll see. And just read your Bible. Let me tell you what the enemy told me years ago when I was in a city. He says, don't tell the people of God that they can be defeat me with the word of God. He said, they don't know. And what he was saying is, they haven't used the word of God on them enough to know. So if you begin to get that word in you, David said, that word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against him, sin against God. When you get that word in your heart, you got more authority because you'll find out in that word that God has given you authority over devils and demons and sorcerers and witchcraft. That's, don't, don't worry about that stuff. God is going to take care of that stuff. Just stay faithful to him. Stay rooted and grounded in him. Don't you see how the world is turning? How the world is changing? How people are changing? How people are selling their soul to the devil for the almighty dollar? Can't you see that preachers are not preaching? They're killing us. Killing us with junk food. That sugar. Sugar kills. Sugar causes cancer. So if sugar causes cancer, what do you think that watered down word of God is going to do? It's going to kill you and you're going to end up in hell. 
So I'm trying to just not, you know, admonish everybody. Don't let that happen to you. You got to work out your own soul salvation with fear and trembling. You can't put everything on the on the pastors. God giving you the ability to study. Timothy says, study to show yourself approval unto God. A workman need not to be ashamed for rightly dividing the word of truth. So that's what we have to do. We have to study. We have to pray without ceasing. ceasing. We have to, you know, offer up. Offer up our prayers to God and let him exalt us. Let him keep us elevated. And the Holy Spirit will talk to you. Because the Bible said that he's our teacher, he's our leader, he's our God, and he will guide us into all truth. So he will do all that. He, he, you got everything you need. Everything you need is in Christ Jesus. Everything we need is in Christ Jesus. How about that? So I'm going to let you... Uh, Get a hold of these cabbages because I don't want to overcook them. So we're gonna bless our food. Let's uh, get a fork. So we're gonna bless our food. So let's get a fork. Wash my hand after I touch my hand. You know how things go. Yeah. And that's our bacon. So here we are. So this is our cabbage. And we're going to bless our food, okay? In the name of Jesus. That's a song the Lord gave to me when I was, um, when we would have our family gathering, is to bless our food. So I made it into a song. And the song says, Bless my food in the name of Jesus. Bless my food in the name of Jesus. Bless my food in the name of Jesus. Bless my food. Oh, bless my food in the name of Jesus. Come on and bless my food, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Bless my food, bless my food, Lord, bless my food. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this food that thou hast prepared and thou hast set before us. In your son Jesus' name, we ask, O oh God, that it will be wholesome and nourishing for the body for which it was prepared. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And I like to say a special prayer for those that are going through. Because I don't want to just take things for granted. Heavenly Father, we ask, O oh God, that you will comfort the heart of your people, O oh God. We ask, Father, that you will meet the need of your people right now in the name of Jesus that is going through on their jobs, Father. Father, we ask that you will bind the bullies right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We ask, oh God, that every spirit that is not of you will come into the obedience of Christ right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. We serve notice, notice on you, devil, right now in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus. We ask, oh God, that your Holy Spirit will go into every work unit in the name of Jesus across the around the world and across the nation, Father, in Jesus' name. We ask that you will arrest the spirit of the enemy right now. We ask that his plan, his plot, and his trap, and his hidden agendas will come to note, Father God, and fall back upon the enemy in the name of Jesus. We ask, Father God, that you will give our viewers and our listeners and our subscribers peace, joy, in the Holy Spirit. We ask the God of comfort will comfort them right now in Jesus' name. We ask, Father God, that you, oh God, will go with them in the workplace. When the enemy comes up, Father God, and lift up a standard against your people, Father God, you, we ask, Father God, that you lift up a greater standard because you said when the enemy come in as a flood, 
stood, you, Father, you lift up a standard against them. So, Father God, we ask that the greater one that is in us, Father God, will annihilate and do away with every plan of the enemy. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We pray for their health. We pray that the spirit of depression will leave them now in the name of Jesus. Suicide demon, we talk to you now. We command you to leave right now. Mental health, we bind you right now in the name of Jesus. We come against you right now in Jesus' name. We plead the blood of Jesus. These people are the children of God and they have the mind of Christ. So we bind you and we command you to loose their hope, right, their stronghold right now in the name of Jesus. We say, Father, thank you, and we give you glory, and we give you honor. Amen. God bless you.